An Israeli court has ruled that the country's military were not responsible for the death of US activist Rachel Corrie, who was crushed by an army bulldozer in 2003. The judge said it was an accident. The 23-year-old was taking part in a demonstration trying to stop Palestinian homes from being destroyed in Gaza. Well, let's now talk to Ronnie Barkin, an Israel-based activist. Now, I understand you were in court when the sentence was read out. What do you make of the ruling which absolves the army of negligence? Good evening, Bill. Um, the verdict is unfortunately not surprising. Um, it it is not uh, it doesn't carry uh, water. Actually, um, every argument that was given by the judge that was called f uh, upon by the judge was actually refuted by uh, the Cory family uh, attorney Hossein Abu Hussein. Uh, even simple factual data was. Um, turned around, actually, uh, in this verdict. Um, I'm saying that this is not surprising because uh, the Israeli legal system is actually um, one of the vehicles, or maybe even the main vehicle, of Israeli policies of occupation and apartheid. Uh, and it is actually legitimizing uh, some things that are illegitimate. Um, and what we are calling for is that Israel uh, will abide by its obligations, nothing more, just abide by its obligations under international law uh, and respect universally recognized human rights. And that holds for civilians also in times of war, like uh, Israel claims that happens in Gaza. They claim that this is a situation of war, and still it has obligations to the civilians there. Now, you were in court, and despite the accounts given by eyewitnesses, what was the reaction in the court when the verdict was read out? So I mentioned, first of all, that there wasn't much surprise, but I think that everyone was, you know, we're raising an eyebrow about how, uh, why does it seem that Israel is um, as white as snow and carries no responsibility whatsoever and as if it did nothing wrong and the whole blame lies upon uh, the deceased, lies so what upon does, Rachel. So this what is does what this, the yeah, judge stated. Sure. So what does this verdict mean then for the future of human rights in Israel now? Uh, the Corey family stated that uh, this is um, a sad day uh, for human rights in Israel and I absolutely agree with that. Um, all throughout the period uh, that uh, this case has been going on, this was not only about Rachel, this was about Israel's obligation uh, to protect the lives of civilians. You've just been discussing uh, this situation in Syria, and uh, there was even calls for a no-fly zone over Syria. And that should be considered because we have to protect uh, human lives, civilian lives there. Uh, but why isn't the same being discussed about Israel? Why aren't we discussing Israel's obligations? And why doesn't the world act in order to uh, take responsibility and action to protect the lives that um, Israel is uh, actually totally disregard. It's stated in court, uh, a, a high-ranking uh, high uh, officer in the Israeli army uh, stated in court that there are no civilians in Gaza. As far as they are concerned, in Gaza, no one uh, is, uh, is innocent. Just, just one thought. You've been very critical of the Israeli judicial system. This was, in fact, an American activist, a foreign citizen uh, in question here. Do you think there's any chance, perhaps, that the family could take it beyond an Israeli court now and take it to international appeal? Uh, the family attorney first of all stated that uh, they will appeal to the Israeli Supreme Court. Again, uh, I do not think that uh, many of us have high hopes uh, of the Israeli Supreme Court for the reasons that I mentioned. Um, but uh, yes, the legal venue is still open and uh, I'm sure that the family is considering uh, what are the possible options. Um, the main thing is that to, to, to remember that it is not only about Rachel's case. Rachel's case is a very clear example of uh, the violations carried out by Israel. On a in, uh, as a matter of policy, this is a systematic issue. And, uh, and this has to be challenged. Now, uh, those who are funding uh, and supplying the means of destruction, those who are, who are, who are supporting Israel politically, financially, um, um, militarily, of course, uh, those who supply the means of destruction, in this case, Caterpillar, uh, the, the American company uh, who built the bulldozers, that were purchased by uh, with American uh, money uh, and were delivered to Israel, um, 
they were the ones who were actually used to kill Rachel. So, so all of these, all of those elements that I mentioned are complicit in one way or another. And we have to challenge the whole, uh, the whole system that is, on the one hand, uh, not respecting human rights, and on the other hand, those who are funding and being complicit in that. Ronnie, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Ronnie Barkin, activist calling uh, on boycotting Israel from within there. Very good to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much indeed.